Hey, bro. What's up, man? It's your boy. Like, comment, and subscribe. Share the video if you're rocking with us. That helps the algorithm. It really helps my channel grow. Um, it helps me reach the youth that I'm trying to reach. You know, let them know this ain't the way to go. You know, being a thug, being a gangster, being a street nigga only leads to prison or death. All right? And that's the part that they're not telling you. And nine times out of ten, you're being misled by that street nigga that you looking up to, some gangster nigga that you looking up to, you know, maybe you ain't got, you know, no father figures around. Maybe you ain't got nobody that actually cares about your big best interest. You just got some big homie that cares about his best interest, his uh reputation, his money. So he going to use you to crash out for him. He going to use you to go shoot these niggas and go sell these drugs and go move this and that and rob this and flip that pack. And guess what? You And then and then they got it in your head. No snitching, no snitching. So when you get caught, you're not snitching. You're going to prison forever for a long time, a very long time. All right, so... You know, we here to just, you know what I'm saying? That shit, it's in my heart. You know, I done been there, done that, but I'm here to just, you know, educate, bro, give our information and let you know it ain't all it's cracked out to be. And, you know, that's why I tell some of these stories that I went through myself or witness to let you know, bro, it's no joke in there. Because, I'm, I'm you know, I'm a real nigga. I'm a real man. I'm going to stand up on all 10. And there was plenty of times where I was in the nervous, afraid for my life, heart beating, and I'm just like, yo, where the fuck am I at? Like, what the fuck am I doing here? You know what I'm saying? Strapped up two knives on me. Got down, you know, maybe three or four of my niggas, GD niggas, rocking with me. We backed up against the wall, and it's like eight, nine niggas. We, you know, we in a, a pile full of blood niggas, and it's like, yo, it's about to go down. And it's like, we going to fight, and we going to stab, and we going to get stabbed. And who knows how it's going to end up. But it's like, what the fuck am I doing? You know what I'm saying? So... This ain't what you want, bro, but check it, right? And I'm a little frustrated because I had just tried this video. I was just making this video, and I was like two, three minutes in, and then for some reason, it stopped recording. I don't know if I hit it on accident or what. So, you know, I apologize if I'm coming off a little, you know, antsy or out of breath or just frustrated because, yeah, I, I was like mad. And I started cussing and shit. But anyway, getting in my bed. Ooh, sigh, release the anger. Beginning of my bed, you know, I'm at a medium custody camp right now. Close the door, boy. Stop opening it. I'm at a medium custody camp right now. Um, Something happens. I want to say, like, I had jumped on the nigga or something. I had did something. It was like, because I was turned, right? I had done um, rocked off on some nigga or some shit. I can't even remember right now. It's not coming to me, so, and I don't want to be ever lying to y'all or nothing. So, I'm going to just say... I don't know, but I'm in the hole, all right, I'm at this medium custody camp. And it's like one of them old school, it, it hadn't like got renovated or re-renewed or remodeled, whatever they call that shit. You know, it, it was like not up to date. It was like one of the older prison systems like type shit. Like it had no AC in the hole. It was still the steel bars. It wasn't like, you know, how they had a cells. You have just like a cell door and like, you know, a push a button and it's like, like the air pressure, mechanical, you know, whatever they got going on is how the door opens and closes or whatever. They didn't have that. That's like the newest system. They still had like, like I said, the steel bars where it's like the CEO got to come, you know, unlock that bitch with a key, slide the doors open. And it's like you got got the bar so you could just see everything in your cell, like no privacy. When they walk by, they seeing, you know, and I, and I say no privacy because it was, like I said, it was no AC back there, bro. It was fucking smoldering hot, like you're sweating. It was just so uncomfortable, bro. Like you'd be sweating so much, your fucking... Uh, your sheet on your mattress would be wet. You'd wake up in the middle of the night just stuck to the sheet and just, uh, it was just horrible, right? So during the day when it's even hotter, you know, no homo niggas is in that bitch either draws on or naked. You know what I'm saying? Like ball swinging, free balling, all type of shit, bro. Like you just hot. You just, you don't give a fuck about none of that privacy or none of that. You ain't ashamed. Like nigga, you just trying to fucking survive, be comfortable. You know what I'm saying? That's how horrible it is, bro in some of these holes, right? So, but anyways, 
So you back there and it's like, you know, you be on a on a block where it's like, you know, you see the wall, you locked in your cell, you got your bars, you can look out your bars, you can kind of look, you know, if you got like a mirror or some type of glass or whatever, some type of shiny plastic, you can stick it out and like, you know, look down one end of the hall or the other end of the hall, you know, and so niggas be talking, to, you know, you be yelling out the out your bars and shit. So. And motherfuckers be having kites, you know? They call them kites that you make fishing lines. You use, like, string, pull some strings from your mattress. They used to hate, I mean, pull some strings from your uh, blanket and shit, you know? Tie a bunch of strings up, whatever, and you can slide it and, like, tie an envelope or something. Tie the string to the envelope, and you can slide that bitch down the hall, you know, like, you know? And it's a, it's a technique to it. You know, the more you do it, the better you get. So you can, you know end up sliding that bitch super far down like goddamn if it's 10 cells on that one tier you could slide that bitch just you know from from cell one all the way to cell 10 like you know so everybody can communicate everybody can pass whatever so if it's so niggas be on that bitch blowing big doty smoking big tobacco you know what i'm saying like new nigga, nigga come in come come in the hole he got some tobacco some 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 uh gas boost whatever some pills whatever you know, he got down, yo, I got that, you know. I trying to do business, let me know. You like, what you got? You know, he got down, you know. Send the kite, send the kite, he let you know. Like, I got this, I got that, I'm selling it for this. So niggas be smoking cigarettes, blowing, you know. You wait till the CO walk by, do his little check. They not giving a fuck. Female CO walk by, do her check. They not giving a fuck. Um, usually niggas be, if it's a female CO, since you can just see through the bars, niggas be in that bitch butt naked with they meat out just to show a bitch they meet, you know what I'm saying? Because you just be so, and it sounds crazy and harsh, and again, no glorifying, and almost sounds like damn near, like, perverted, like, sex charges, but it's like, bro, this is the type of shit that humans revert back to, you know, when you're put in these conditions, like, when you're treated like a fucking animal, when you're treated like a fucking gorilla like a chimpanzee my nigga you react like a chimpanzee which is why you can ask any female that ever been a correctional officer like you know did people used to jack they meat on that's what they call like jack they meat on or jack jack on us they're gonna be like hell yeah you know it's damn near normal bro like everybody don't do it don't get me wrong some niggas don't do it but like usually Niggas do it. And it's like the younger the person, you know, the more uh, testosterone, sex drive, you know, the harsher it is on you just being locked up with nothing but men and not getting pussy, the more you li liable to, like, pull your dick out and be jacking it when a female CO walks by. And, like, again, no glorification, no lies, no shame in my game. I done did it several times. That was, like, my thing, too. You feel me? I don't know. It was just, it was just a way for me to adapt mentally to just going from, you know, getting pussy every day to like not getting no pussy for years bro it's, it's crazy right again they treat you get treated like an animal you're gonna act like one but anyways right so um long story short this one dude come in and i think one of my other yeah my, one of my other videos i was talking about uh you know i had got into it over ten dollars a uh a, a drug like ten dollars a Sabatson script, a little script, you know. And I had ended up, you know, I'm GD, so I got my nation behind me, and he was Mexican. And they all sit together, so they damn near a nation in a way. And uh, we got into it, and the politics got worked out, and it was just a one on one fight, no knives, no nothing, so no war had to break out, and we just, you know, fought like men, right? Over ten dollars a drug. So this time, it was si it was similar, right? But but uh, but but unsimilar, dissimilar, whatever the word is, right? So check it. You in the hole. We in the hole. But he got some, 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 uh, it was suboxing again. This nigga got some suboxing. So he like, you know, he, 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 uh, passing the kite. Like, yo, I got this on deck. Like I'm selling it for the low, you know, I'm finna go home. I just need some food. You know what I'm saying? While I'm back here, cause niggas be in them hoes starving. When you go to the hole, they take your canteen. That's another thing, young fella. Think you finna be doing your thing on the yard. Oh, you got money on your bush. You got big bags of, you know, snacks and canteens and sodas and, and soups and chips. <laughs> you go to the hole, they taking all that shit, boy. You ain't, you ain't eat none of that shit. Your ass finna be back there starving like Marvin, nigga. You hear me? So, uh, he was like, yeah, I just need some food. 
And again, he was way down on the other hall. He wasn't even on my tier where it was like 10 or 12, you know, inmates where you could pass a guy. He was all on the other one. So it was like actually like we had to go through the CO, the correctional officer, to even get down there. Like we would, we had, we would like hide shit in magazines. And they like, you, you give them the magazine and only certain COs would do it because they're not supposed to pass from cell to cell. So you'd have to find one that was cool. And then we still like open it up and kind of flip through it real quick, whether it be a newspaper, a book, a magazine, whatever, make sure nothing don't drop out and then they'll they'll take it if they cool to the to the to the sale you ask. So that's what we was doing, right? And you know, he sent a little magazine or whatever, and then it was like on a certain page, you know, it was like the little Kai let me know what he had and shit and goddamn what he wanted for it and this, that, and the third. So I'm like, all right, bet. Like, so he was just like sending ten dollars of food or twenty dollars. I don't even exactly remember. It was like it was something low though. Again, let's just go with twenty. Since the other video it was ten for sure, one hundred percent. This one I'm not sure. I think it was, I think it could have been ten, but something's telling me twenty two. So let's just go with twenty, right? Boom. It was some some bullshit. He wanted just twenty dollars worth of food, and I get my little sabots and shit. So I right, it's already like you don't you know it ain't you ain't face to face. You in a cell. You know, you don't even see the nigga you're doing business with. So it's all about respect. It's all about, you know, trust. It's all about, you know, a lot of shit. And it's like niggas be getting beat back there like that. You know, you get you the wrong nigga fucking with the wrong. You the right nigga fucking with the wrong nigga. The wrong nigga fucking with the right nigga. You going to get beat. Which beat is like, you know, um, you send somebody to fool and you supposed to get your drugs back. And they don't send it, right? So anyway, I'm like, you know, I'm Echo. You know, this still early in my bed, but, you know, I'm GD. I'm affiliated. A lot of people know me. You know, no bragging, no tooting my own horn, no glory. But, you know, so my name was buzzing a little bit at this camp. And that's why they had locked me up in the first place. As a matter of fact, now I remember it was a fight. We had beat this big ass, tall. Uh, he was like, he was like mixed. Like he was like Dominican and, and something. He was like a big ass mixed nigga, had long hair, but and he got caught fucking a punk in the bathroom. So he was like fucking a nigga in the bathroom. So when we seen that, we had like put him on blast and he had was like got crazy at the mouth. So me and this other nigga had beat him up and he ran to the police and told. That's why I was locked up. Facts, I remember, right? So boom. Back to the story. So I send this guy to bread. And I never seen what he looked like. I never even heard his voice. He never even yelled out. It was just all. Matter of fact, it was like the nigga that was next to him was talking for him. That's how I knew about it in the first place. You know, that he had something he wanted to sell. And I was like, yeah, I bet. Like, you know, send the info down type shit. It was like the nigga that was in a cell. And I guess like I come to find out they was like working together. Like whatever they was going to get, they was going to split, you know. And uh, so... Long story short, right? I send the food down there. Boom. I'm beat. Like, I'm, I send the food down there, and I'm like, all right, bet. Like, I'm waiting. Nothing. You know, a couple minutes go by. I yell out like, yo, let me know something was good. Like, you got, you got, I sent you that. Boom. Silent. So now I'm like, now I'm getting a weird vibe. Like, oh, you playing with this shit? I'm hot. I'm, I'm trying to speed up because I'm tired of making, like, 30-minute videos. They be taking forever to low. So anyways. So now I yell at the nigga who I was taught communicating with at first, who was communicating for him, like who was next in the cell. He was still way on the other end though. But I'm like, bro, hey, like, are you playing with the right one, bro? Like, I ain't even gonna say too much. I ain't gonna woof you behind these doors. I ain't gonna, cause you know, you be having them, them behind the door warriors that they be behind a the cell, they be behind the door and they be, oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. Oh, you a bitch, you, I'll kill you, I'll, I'll stab you up and all that and like won't do shit when the door pop. So it's like, you know, like the real niggas is the ones that's, we're not even finna do all that. Like, we behind the cell, like, say no more. You know, I might say something little like, bro, say no more. I'll holler at you when I catch you, bro. You got it. But anyway, so I'm talking to him. I'm talking to the dude next to him. I'm like, bro, you don't know me, and I don't know you. My name Echo, bro, and I ain't finna woof you behind this door. And I'm, you know, I'm saying like this because I'm kind of projecting my voice, yelling. And I'm like, I ain't gonna do too much woofing behind this door, bro. But I'm like, yo, like, you got the wrong one, bro. So, hey, just go ahead, send my food back, you know, send my money back. And we just let bygones be bygones. I won't even trip. I'll let that shit slide, you know, whatever. But if I don't get my food back by the end of the, 
you know, I think whether, if I said the end of the night or by the next hour or whatever, I don't know. But basically, I told him, like, if I don't get my food back, then say less, you know. So, boom, I just fell back. I'm mad as fuck. Because, like, the food that I gave him was all the food I had, bro. Like, like, for real. Like, you know, and I'm just back there thugging it in a hole, you know, going through it. And it's like, at some point, like, nigga, fuck that food. You in a hole. Like, you just want to escape. You know what I'm saying? That shit's torture. So, it's like... You know, you get some drugs back there, some weed, some some pills, some some anything, some strips. You just, you're down there spend whatever on that shit just to, you know, just to fucking escape mentally, bro. You know, even if it's just for a day, even if it's just for a night, even if it's just for a couple of hours, bro. You know, and I had done been in a whole, like, 25, 30 days at this point. I was about to ship. So anyways, long story short, right, he ain't sending the food back. And it was so crazy because, you know, like the story, like the, the low key, like more to the story is like, bro, when you in prison, always keep your face card good. Always do good business. All right. Don't never try to beat nobody. Even if you think you're in a situation like, oh, y'all behind the wall and y'all behind the cell and you about to go home from your cell. Because look, the story with this guy was. He was leaving. He he was, It was like his last couple of days in prison, and he was shipping out to home. He was shipping to his home camp from this camp. So it was like all these niggas that he's around, he was never gonna see again. You know what I'm saying? In like a couple of days, whenever they his, whenever it's time for him to ship, they gonna ship him from that medium custody prison he was at and ship him to whatever the prison is, where it's like you know in his city or you know close to his city or whatever in his county, whatever the case may be. You feel me? So because he was going home, so that's why he did that. If he would have just been a regular nigga on the yard, knowing he had to go back to the yard. He would have never did that in the first place because he would have known, nigga, it's severe consequences come with that. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? So it's like, especially like doing business with a gang member like that, and then you're doing bad business. Oh, what? That's you, that's damn near suicide. So it was just, it was just crazy. And like the fact that he had did it, I just didn't understand. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? And now I got that that tension and that pain and that 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 anxiety and that in my chest where it's like, damn, now I know I got to get this nigga and I don't understand why he would even do that. You feel me? Because now you know it's up. So anyways, bro, long story short, it's shipping day, right? And they come in and ship me too. Because remember I told you I was medium custody and I had got, I had got knocked back to to close custody, which is basically like going from medium to maximum security. You know what I'm saying? So now, because I had gotten that fight and gotten some other shit and some people had was writing, uh, like dropping statements on me saying like me and, you know, the GD niggas was doing this and doing that and was extorting people and, well, you know, was sell you know, it was, it was a bunch of shit, right? So again, no glorifying it. It was, that's just what it is, bro. So, boom, so they tell me, like, you know, pack your bags. They give me my little slip. They tell me I'm shipping tonight, right? And you ship at late as fuck, like 2, 3 in the morning. So, boom, I pack my bag. And I'm looking down the hall, and guess who else got that slip? Guess who else had to pack their bags? That nigga that beat me. That cell. And now, again, mind you, I had still had never seen a face. I had still never seen his face, still never heard his voice, bro. It could be a big-ass 6'8", 500-pound black nigga. It could be a fucking 4'2", 108-pound uh, Chinese nigga. It could be a yellow, brown, red, green, orange, sherbet-looking nigga. I have no idea what he looks like or what he sounds like. I never seen him, never heard him, all right? Communication we did, it started out with his, the nigga that was next to him, talking for him. Which already was kind of like uh, red flag, but you know I was just so thirsty for that shit. I was just like giving them the benefit of the doubt, and then all the other communication about you know what drugs he got, the prices and shit like that went through kites through the magazines, right? So boom. But now I see, oh shit, this nigga from the ship. And when you ship, you y'all all come out at the same time, two o'clock, you know, two three in the morning, one in the morning, whatever time it is, and uh. Um, when you're at medium, they don't shackle you. Now I'm going to max, so I'm going where I went to max. Whenever they uh 
Like, whenever they doing anything, they shipping you or whatever, you're going to be shackled and handcuffed and handcuffed to somebody. And, you know, sometimes not even handcuffed to somebody, just handcuffed and shackled by yourself because they looking at it like all the inmates are so dangerous. They don't want to put you next to nobody. They done learned from the past where nigga be handcuffed to somebody and one nigga can get out of his, you know, shackles and, and, and or get out his handcuffs and just be stabbing the shit out of nigga that's like cuffed up whatever to him or some shit you know so but anyway so bro it was so crazy like they come and get us it's like one two in the morning and i see who comes out that cell right boom it's this short ass white boy goofy nerdy looking lame ass nigga like why the fuck would you even do that type shit? But again, I told you he did that because he thought it was no repercussions. He thought it was no consequences. He thought he had he thought he had it all planned out and 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 it just so happens it was like the universe just all came together the right way to teach his bitch ass a lesson. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that would have worked perfectly if I wasn't shipping. If I wasn't if I wouldn't have just, you know, had my little whatever tribunal, whatever that shit's called, like reclassification shit for getting in trouble and got, you know, reclassified to maximum security. If all that wouldn't have happened was just, you know, he wouldn't have known any of that. He wouldn't have known that. So he had no idea that I was going to be shipping. It was just like by happens chance, by luck. It was crazy. And I was just so now I'm feeling like, bro, it's literally like a gift from the gods, like a gift from the universe. Like, you know, I was so mad. And I was like for days after I had gave him all my food starving. And he was just over there. I'm just thinking about this nigga over there eating my tuna, eating my fucking, my, my cheese squeeze, my chili uh, bean, my, you know what I'm saying? Like all the food that I had, nigga, my chips. He was eating that shit, nigga. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so, and yeah, let me clarify, like, so in the whole, you don't get your shit, but like it's certain classifications, like when you're like admin, segregation which that means like you got sent to the hole but they didn't finish the investigation then you're not technically charged you're not you're charged but you're not convicted like you're not found guilty of the charge yet so you get your food still but once you go in there once you got found guilty and you go to the hole and get sentenced like 50 days in the hole 60 days 40 days whatever then you don't get shit they take your food they take everything right all you can have is like books and like like your uh prison issue radio and that's it you know what i'm saying and like you know like a, a pen and a paper type shit. And uh, so that's how come, you know, you, you can accumulate food back there if you're doing business, if you got, you know what I'm saying? So I just, you know, I want to clarify that so people don't think like, oh, you said there's no food back there, you lying, you know? So boom, but niggas that done been to prison know, that's watching this know, I'm speaking facts, bro. I ain't got shit to lie about. But anyway, I'm like, yes, this is from the gods. I'm about to punish this nigga. And, bro, he was just so small and dorky and lame looking. It's like, bro, are you serious? So I know when he seen me come out, I'm not sure if he immediately knew, you know, that I was the nigga he beat. But at some point, whatever the point is that he did when he heard me talking, and like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, we shipping. Like, I know it had to click. Like, what the fuck? And, like, bro, he knew. He knew I knew because so the whole time we walking, you know, we walking from, from the hole to the other place where we got a ship and, you know, they go through our stuff and then they give us our little morning lunch because we're going to be, we ain't going, we're going to miss child because we're going to be on the bus and shit, right? So shit changes a little different, right? So it was like, yo, buddy, I sat down right behind buddy. I made sure when we grabbed our lunch, you know, I grabbed my lunch and I sat right behind buddy to the right of him like i hadn't thought about everything where i can just get up with my right hand and just you know rock it off like that i'm thinking like a warrior like how's the best where's the best place for i could sit to just pop it off the best type shit and bro so i sat there and it was crazy because i was so hungry because i had been starving then I'm like, I want to just get him right there, beam me and pop it off. But I'm like, they just going to put me back in the hole. And I'm so I'm going to just, you know what? I'm going to just calm my nerves. I'm going to steal my nerves like a true warrior, like a true gangster. I'm going to eat my motherfucking, uh, my meal, the little bag, bag lunch they gave me, the bag breakfast. It was like a peanut butter sandwich and an ice cold milk. And like maybe like a fruit, a fruit cup or some shit. I don't remember. It was some bullshit. But so I'm sitting there and Buddy turns and looks at me and he's like, yo, I just want to tell you 
that that, was, that that wasn't me, bro. That was the guy next to me. He was making me or some shit like that, right? And uh, and I was he was like he was like that the guy acted like he was me and I just you know was he was saying some bullshit, but I was playing it off instead of like nigga what you got me fucked up, I was still eating my sandwich. I was like bro you good. I try to put him all the way at ease. I was like bro you good. I already know it was that other nigga, and he was like oh okay. And I was like yeah I already know. I know how that dude get down. I know him from the yard. He a slime ball like that. So I'm talking like I'm believing his bullshit. This is another thing. That's what I'm saying, boy. Prison is not the place you want to be because you think niggas is just all niggas is dumb in there. No, I'm a very intelligent person. Like, it's a lot of intelligent niggas back there, bro. There's violent, too. So it's like niggas is thinking. You know, he thinking he's smart. He's going to spend me some bullshit. I'm spending that shit right back. I'm acting like I'm, I'm biting. I'm acting like I'm going for it when really I'm not, nigga. Yo, 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 uh, yo, uh, yo, yo fucking... Your fate, your future is already wrote. You feel me? Um. So boom, right? I eat, and then it's crazy. Like that's how this nigga had such a guilty conscience and felt so bad while I'm eating my food. He was like, "Yo, you you want you want my shot?" He was like, "Yo, you want my lunch?" He was like, "Yo, you want my my food bag?" And I was like. On my son's beating heart, nigga. Strike me down if dead right now if I'm lying. I was like, hell yeah, bro. Let me get that. So I ate my sandwich, smashed my ice cold milk, and I ate his sandwich and smashed his ice cold milk. <laughs> hey, look, bro. This shit is so crazy, right? So as soon as I, I, done, I done got nice and full, I done had two big-ass peanut butter sandwiches, two big-ass ice cold milk. So now I'm like, shit. You know, they throw me in the hole. Now I'm good. I can sit. You feel me? I'm, I'm straight at least for another 24 hours. So so right then I'm like, all right, I'm going to do this shit. So I, I ball up the little after I eat, put all the shit in the little bags. I bought the little bags up. I get up and like that was the only time you could get up was to like throw something in the trash or like uh, or like uh, go to the, the latrine, the restroom, whatever. So I go up, right? I get up, I see him kind of looking, so I'm like, I ain't gonna do it right. You know, I'm still playing it off smooth. I done been faking him out. I throw it away. I throw it in the garbage can. I'm not even looking his way. I'm, you know, I'm looking cool. I'm not looking mad. I'm, I done perfected this shit. I done did this shit before. So, boom, I'm looking calm, cool, collected. The, the whole time, I'm ready to just explode like a firecracker. So I go walk behind him, walk to my seat. Remember, it was like right there behind him to the right. And like, as soon as I go to sit down, I get him, boom, I just hit him, boom, right on the side, he don't even see it, he looking forward, or, and I just, I just act like I'm sitting down, and just come up, bah, his ass, ugh, fly out the seat, boo boo, he roll, bro, I swear to God, he roll, I jump, I jump up, I like a tiger, ha, ha, bing, 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 boom, bing, 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 boom, giving it to him, he on the ground, he balled up in the fetal position, kicking his feet like, ugh, uh, um, bing, 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 bing. The police run up in there. It was like it was crazy because it was like we had one CO sitting like in a far corner, big black dude. He was like, you know, he was it's two, it's like I said, it's like one, two, three in the morning. Like he ain't, you know, he dozing off tired too, so I'm binging his shit. Ah. Like the, and there was some other COs uh in the room next to him. So they run in, they run in with the uh with the mason and shit. Um bop, bop, bing, ding, boom, boom, boom. They start, they start mason. Like, submit to the cuss. Submit to the cuss. I'm like, I'm like, uh, I'm like, uh, all right, you got it. You got to submit. I submit. I put my hands up and shit. And it was crazy because I beat him. I beat his. I, I landed so many good hits. Like, just off that first hit was so mean and vicious. You know, stole the shit out of him. You know what? Who gives a fuck? He deserved it. He was a slime ball. And everything, it ain't one-on-one -on -one in prison like everybody thinks. You can have your one-on-ones. Like I said, when it's like some gang members against gang members or, you know, niggas is respected, got, you know, got uh, nations behind them and shit, you can get one-on-ones. But a lot of times, my nigga, it's just, it's survival of the fittest and it's violent as fuck. And you got to think about it. Ain't no fucking ape in the jungle. Ain't no tiger in the jungle finna pop up and be like, yo, you ready? I'm finna try to eat you. Hell no. Nah. Ain't no predator doing that, nigga. And there's predators in prison. So, it, yeah, I just stole the fuck out of him. Bah! Without him even looking. He just da -da, hit the ground. I'm on top. Da -da -da -da. Back stomping him. Boop, boop. Bop, 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 bop. He, ah, uh, ah, uh, help, help. And they come in. Da -da -da. Shh, shh. 
ta I mean, uh, I keep saying taser, pepper spray and shit. And uh, it was crazy. Yeah, like, I'm like, I said me, I said me. I back up real quick. I had got hit with just a little bit, so I was good, really. Like, you know, I could still see out both my eyes, but I'm putting my head down just in case. I got my hands up, like, you know, like, showing them both hands. Like, I submit, I submit, I submit to the cuffs. And, like, bro, I swear to God, I don't know if it was, like, some racist shit or what, but all these officers was black, you know, and it was just, like, this dude on the ground was just white. <laughs> and he was bleeding and, lump, like, red and swollen. And I just, like, remember looking back, I just see this black officer... <laughs> Still basing the shit out of this nigga, like, while he on the ground. I think, because, like, he wasn't, like, saying, I submit, I submit. Because probably he couldn't. He was, like, fucking unaware of what was going on. He just got stolen, just brutalized. You know what I'm saying? So, it was just funny. Not only did I get his ass back, not only did I just get all the way off on him, but his ass, the police maced the shit out of him and got all the way off on him. And more to the story, nigga, don't be a fucking slime ball. Nigga, do good business because that shit will come back to bite you in the ass. Karma is fucking real, bro. That shit got his ass. And it was crazy because, like I said... He was shipping from that prison to his, like, close to home prison. And he was, he was going to be a free man in, like, no more than two or three days. You feel me? So not only <laughs> not only was he just going to be a free man, but now nah, he was going to be a free man with, like, a busted-ass fucking lip with a mean-ass cut and gash on it because it, it was his lip that was just pouring blood. He had lumps all on his shit, all on his side. And it's like, you know, I, and and that hit, who knows, man, that hit could have fractured, that first hit could have fractured his jaw, all type of shit. Again, I'm not saying it did, I don't know. There was no way for me to verify, but bro, that was a good ass hit. It connected perfectly and he didn't see it coming. So those was, is the worst, man. You feel me? So, hey, that's my little story for the day, man. Again, bro, fuck with me, bro, y'all. Fuck with me. Share my videos. I, I see some a lot of y'all liking and commenting, man. I like that. I appreciate that. You see, I try to comment back to everybody, bro. Also, share it, my nigga. Share this shit. That'll really help get it out there, man. Help the channel grow, bro. But yeah, like, comment, and subscribe. Fuck with your boy, man. It's Echo, man. I'm out, bro.